Hello, Sugaristas. Welcome back. We are here again today with yet another awesome SugarCon interview. And I'm really excited for this one because I have Kyle Alexander, who is the U.S. Coordinator for Education for Tamara Sugar, a dear friend of mine. We've worked closely together for many years now. She's also one of the top sugaring educators in the U.S. at Pretty Sweet Training, and she also owns her own sugaring studio called Pretty Sweet. So Kyle, welcome, and thank you for coming on SugarCon today. Hi. Hey, um, do you want to give an introduction and tell everybody who you are, where you're from, all the kind of intro stuff so people can get a feel for um, how you got started and where you're based? Yeah. Um, so I work in Portland, Oregon. I've been in Portland for like 20 years, but I went to beauty school about, I guess, eight years ago. And um, it was a pivot from another graduate degree kind of dream. And so I got my beauty degree and then I worked in the field for a little bit and taught myself or went and got certification. I'm really bad on video, guys. Sorry. Certification <laughs> on um, sugar in the middle of beauty school. And then I kind of butted around with it and then I fell into it and got a job in sugaring. I was still working as a hairstylist. And then I um, worked for Stephanie for a bit before she jumped over the pond. Is that what we call it? The pond? She yep. jumped over it. And then um, I just decided I didn't want to work for anyone else. So I opened up my own studio and the rest has been a very, very crazy, very cool journey of teaching, training, learning, meeting people, having tons of clients, traveling. Employees, traveling. It's every time I look up, it's a new kind of opportunity. So I just keep picking. Them. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, like me, fell down the sugar rabbit hole very, yeah. very far. <laughs> it's so true. It is. But you know what, it's that's why you and I are kindred spirits and that we have shared this love of sugaring and let's call it an obsession with sugaring <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> and also uh, this curiosity around how to teach sugaring in a way that makes sense to people and that they can pick it up and learn it really well is um, you're one of the, the few people I've ever met who dorks out as much as I do on that. Um, oh, right. Yeah. And so Kyle and I have had some awesome experiences over the years and done some traveling together and hosted big classes and small classes. And so it's been a really fun journey. And so what Kyle's here to talk a little bit about today um, is around the mindset of becoming a sugar, understanding and becoming an expert at the technique and how those skills kind of translate into the rest of your life. So it's that bit of, about mindset, um, how sugaring as a technique kind of parallels into your, your life. And then because it's uh, Kyle and I having conversation, we shall probably take three or four turns in other directions that we cannot see yet. <laughs> and who knows where we'll go. Um, but I think it's an important conversation because we talk a little bit more about um, what it means to become a sugarer, what opportunities exist as a sugar, and how you can use sugaring, this skill of being able to remove hair to um, have an amazing experience in your business and in your life, that it is a, a growth journey beyond just ripping people's hair out. And this we know because that's exactly how and why we fell down the sugar rabbit hole, because it is really rich in a lot of experiences and a lot of growth. So I will turn over to you, Kyle. Do you want to talk a little bit about your, I think it'd be interesting to hear maybe your philosophy around education. So mm -hmm. you have been teaching for a long time and you manage all of the education in the U.S. And I think that may be can take us into the conversation around mindset. So do you want to yeah. start in there? Sure. Um, so I, I may seem kind of odd at the end of class after I've taught you a full day, but I get this kind of mother hen thing where I go, but don't leave yet. And that's because I can't um, stop wanting excellence for you. So I'm, 
I won't say that I'm a perfectionist and I won't say that perfectionism lends itself to sugaring, but it lends itself to learning how to get better and learning what went right or what went wrong. So when you step into a class with me, we're going to really start with the basics, but at the end, um, you're not done with me. I'm going to follow you around <laughs> and I'm going to ask you what's going right, what's going wrong, how how have you done, you know, have you been sugaring, even if it's sitting at home watching a binge, sugaring your legs, your own legs, those are all huge things. So um yeah, for education for me, it's just a growing process. And I keep learning from students and mm -hmm. I keep learning different personalities and different classes and um i might tweak a class one way or the other right now i'm uh stephanie knows i'm obsessed with arms as we've pivoted during covid i'm obsessed with them and how they can teach us more about things um that we may not be able to work on as much while we, while we wear masks so that kind of stuff just gets me excited it makes it not boring anymore um yeah. Yeah. So when I stepped into the education uh, coordination role, what I wanted to do was bring everyone together. Um, anyone that's worked with me knows that I I want a big, I almost said flock, but I'm not religious and I'm certainly not culty. So um, <laughs> I want a big group. A sugar and, cult. Yeah, I want, um, I want support. And I loved when I stepped in, um, as a student that there was a Facebook group from my educator yeah. for me to ask questions in because your learning isn't done after the eight hours. It is and not done. We all know that. So um, it was really awesome to be able to go in there and talk to other people and realize the questions are always the same. They're always the same. And so um, just being able to help other people in that same step. And then when they say, I'm bored, What's next? I say, okay, cool. Go bigger, go softer, go teach. All those yeah. things. And yeah. Um, yeah, so that's exciting for me. Yeah. We always talk about the trajectory of a, a sugarer. The idea that maybe you're going to train in sugaring and become a sugarista. And then you become a baby sugarista and you're, mm -hmm. you're fumbling around, you're learning all the skills, you're trying to figure out how does this work? How can I make this work in my life? Can I, can, mm -hmm. is this a business? Can I actually have a business doing this? And then you get yeah. going and you start picking up some steam. And then you, there seems to always be this point you reach where there are then this new level of opportunity for growth, right? And for some people that's expanding and hiring employees. Mm -hmm. And for some people that's education. And for some people like yourself, it's expanding and hiring employees and education. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes people, they come to sugar because they're curious about it. They heard it's interesting, it's trending, it's natural, right? Um, but mm -hmm. they maybe can't see the doors that open ahead of them because I think you and I are perfect examples of people who have went all in on sugaring. And right. I could work seven days a week, 10 hours a day, and still not even remotely scratch the surface of the work that can be done to promote sugaring, to promote good education, to bring more people into it. Um, it is, at least I think in our experience, Ben, no matter which way you look, there's always an abundance of opportunities. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, what we're doing, this is going to sound kind of crazy, is important. But because when you think, well, I'm just taking out someone's leg hair. Right. This is not, this is not simple stuff. I mean, I went to school for art and I was going to go to get my graduate degree in art therapy. And it was because I wanted to help people. And when I walked into the salon one day, I was like, wait a minute. I can help people in a different way. I just, I don't know why. I was not a beauty school. I was not a high makeup kind yeah. of high maintenance person. And I talked to my hairstylist about it. And she said, do that. People pay their electricity bill after they pay their hairstylist. And I mean, <laughs> my job was four. Yeah. So I thought, huh, $100,000 in graduate school loans or, you know, go to beauty school, see what happens. It's yeah. not that big of an investment yeah. if it doesn't end up panning out and the consistent thing i've done it may not have been you know doing the same thing every time but i've believed in myself 
So when that opportunity came, I just, I mean, for better or for worse, sometimes for taking on too much of a big lease or something, you know, we learn yeah. our lesson yeah. or we forget to call our accountant, but I've always believed in myself. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, I think that that's probably one of my biggest pat, pat myself on the back. And I'm not normally that, that person, you know, that, um, that I'm not like, a. Oh, I'm so great. The one thing I knew was I can do this. Mm-hmm. I can connect. people. It's a little bit of chemistry and it's connecting. Yeah. And so if you have those skills, which everyone does, it's one of the most ancient things to do is to groom. Even if you look back at different animal societies, that's <laughs> happening. So if you can do that, you can do this. And it's yeah. just, um, it can be as complex or as simple as you want it to make it. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. And certainly I've seen um, sugars, students come to class and maybe it doesn't click right away and they struggle, but they've got the, this, you know, amazing personality or a, ability to like really engage with people or make people laugh or uh, be really nurturing or caring. Like everybody has their kind of own way that they connect with clients. And so even mm-hmm. someone who doesn't get it right away, when they have that ability to communicate with people, they will go on and be successful. And and well, even more so than someone who clicks with the technique right away, but doesn't have the love or desire to connect with people. And I can say that from years of experience of watching in the classroom, but also from my own personal experience, because the only reason I'm still here is because in the first year, I managed to keep people coming in because Mm -hmm. probably, probably because they couldn't um, hurt my feelings because I was trying so hard, you know, they were like, oh, well, she's just working so hard and she's so nice. So I'm going to keep coming back. It wasn't from my technical skill. I think mm-hmm. now education's come a really long way and people have a much better chance of getting good education and having the technical skills. But so much of it is really about how you connect and how you engage with, with people. And I think that really leads yeah. to this bigger conversation around like, becoming a sugarer is so much more than just removing hair. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what people discover as mm-hmm. they start working with clients and having this experience of growth in that I can do this, this thing for myself. I can make a living with it. I'm impacting mm-hmm. people's lives. And so do you want to talk a little bit on um, what we were talking about before we started recording this about mm-hmm. the mindset and what, what you can take away from sugaring that is a kind of transferable skill to your own personal growth? Yeah, definitely. So what's that? That's a big question, but. I mean, I'm going to go back to what I teach in class, which is even the largest problems can be broken down. I'm obsessed with variables. If you catch me on the Tamra sugaring community, you see me saying, when did it happen yeah when did it happen what happened picture because i want facts people know even my clients i'm collecting data and patterns all the time from just having those conversations yeah so what i think is most applicable for all of this is um especially in 2020 there i said it i said the year 2020 (laughs) um it's okay the year will that will never be forgotten i know so when we're looking at um just what's happening now with the sugar when you're learning people tend to get ahead of themselves because it's a good thing of human nature to want to project and want to build and want to think um steps ahead but when you're starting we need to sit in it at that place and pause and that pause is so important because it allows us us to reflect and see what's happening in front of us right not what we think might happen in a moment not what you know Mm -hmm. don't get caught up in that what's happening now and take the appropriate action and i think a lot of people wait too long or they don't uh see opportunity because they aren't in the moment or it doesn't fit their you know their dream narrative Mm -hmm. i can tell you that um, your wallpaper is speaking to me because my dream in beauty school, I was going to own a salon, not mm-hmm. a sugar 
I was going to own a salon. I actually knew what the wallpaper in the bathroom was going to look like. <laughs> um, this is what I was going to do. That, yeah, all of these things. And the reality is, if you're authentic, you will gravitate to what you need to do. Yeah. And so if that means a very, um, you know, fast paced, um, you know, speed goal of waxing, or if it looks like a salon with the $200 shampoo, that's what it's going to be. And none of it's right or wrong. You just have to sit in your authentic space. Mm -hmm. And so being in that moment is so important. But when we're learning a skill, we're caught up in the what am I doing? Am I, you know, it, do I seem like I'm getting it? Am I getting it? And all those internal voices start. Yeah. And so you just have to say, hold on, quiet the voices. What's happening now? And this is the appropriate action that I'll do it for, do, do for that. Right. Yeah. So the art of Zen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, and I think when I was in the hair world, I mean, I got recruited out of beauty school. I was okay. I'm older than the natural or the typical beauty school student. I went to beauty school at, in my early 30s, mm -hmm. and I was, you know, kind of annoying. Kind of annoying. I asked questions. People no. were like, I asked questions. When people were like, I can't, can I tell you how many times I heard just because? And at times, just cause. And I was like, okay, yeah. this is not learning. Yeah. So when I got the opportunity to go to a class and take something and break it down and say, why? Yeah. I, was, I, I certainly did that. And I just keep on doing that because it's kind of awesome. I mean, yeah. you just, now I get to see people go, but why? Or I have to remind them, but why? Right. <laughs> that so when i got recruited out of hair school i went to a you know fast-paced very you know she she's salon downtown and it didn't fit for me the yeah. other thing i needed was the people running it were not practitioners and so as i've been able to step into um different jobs where there were you know they were women owned they were smaller that made me feel at home so mm -hmm. I saw that mentorship and experienced that. And I thought, well, if they can do it and we have similar principles and goals, certainly I can do it. Yeah. And those steps and those believing in just smaller things mm -hmm. allowed me to take steps further. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just like jump yeah. from enormous boulder to boulder. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's why I think I could believe in myself. And that's why I tell people, hey, I'm here for you. If you want to talk about, you know, how to pick your first space if you want to talk about how to make your business card those are all just things that we've most of us have you know sat and poured over and worried about and now it's like oh let's right. pull this together in the last five minutes right right <laughs> so um, i've spent a year googling that so here's the five minute <laughs> yes. here's the five yeah. minute process yeah. Right. How much do you think that I'm, I'm curious as you're talking about this, how much do you think it was important to you to your, you know, working in smaller um, environments and, and like witnessing other small business owners run businesses and seeing that, how important was that in your ability to come to the place in your head where you knew you were capable of doing it? Did you need to, do you think that was integral in, in being able to go out and do something on your own? Absolutely. Because, you know, societally, I don't, I think we're still very, very behind in that women are running business and that's a model. I mean, I don't think that that's huge yet. I think it's actually, you know, I don't think we don't, we just don't tell those stories. We don't, right. we don't, we tell them to each other because, you know, we're excited about it, but you know, it's not shown on TV, at least here in America, that like, you know, we're doing little things and accomplishing things in small ways. But when you go to make a change, I always say it starts with yourself, then your immediate um, surroundings. And then and that's how the waves get started. So mm -hmm. I think it's huge. And also just like watching people make their own little mistakes and you know, remembering not to say, well, I wouldn't do that, you right. know, but rather right. like, 
Hmm, interesting. I need to remember that because I think, again, thinking too ahead in the future, too far ahead in the future, and staying in your own lane and comparative comparative statements or comparative thoughts are so um they're just distracting yeah they're just distracting and so i don't do them and i just i kind of worry about my own my own growth and my own even what is happening now like you don't always have to be in a growth phase personally Absolutely. i have to remember that I'm not always in a growth phase. Sometimes we're resting. Plants take the entire winter mm -hmm. to get ready for spring. Yeah. We don't always have to be blooming. Sometimes we're like cooking up the next thing. Yeah, yeah. I did uh, during um, all of the closures this year with my free time. <laughs> I went down this long journey of doing all this online education and attending all of these online classes and speakers and coaching. And one of the um, workshops that I did was about um, the seasons as it pertains to your business life and your personal life. And that, that there, there is, there are shifts in seasons no matter what and they have to do with your energy cycles and what's going on in your family life and your business and also just the natural cyclical nature of um, ideas and the flow of your business and it was really good for me because when we did the we did this big worksheet and I was like frantically manically overly caffeinated writing and I was like uh, so yeah basically I'm trying to live in summer all yeah. year long I want blooms. I want big flowers coming at me all times, but those flowers don't bloom unless you tend to them, you plant them, you water them, you nurture them. And also what the um, the coach talked a lot about too was that there, there needs to be, and it's important to the kind of ecosystem of your life that there is this season where things, the leaves fall off and that decay, which is such a hard word, but like that kind of closing of a cycle and like the mm -hmm. decay and the frost comes in and that time for introspection and that time to like go go within and just be okay with not having a million ideas um yeah. and that was so good for me because i i really um and i think so many people need need that acknowledgement that because there is an expectation we should be succeeding launching growing at all times but we are just not wired that way. It's such a sense of relief to say, you know what, I'm, and w m your winter could be in the summer. It's, it has nothing to do with right. the actual seasons, but right. you could just acknowledge and embrace, like I am in my winter right now. And what can I get from that? Like, what can I honor from being in my winter, which is rest, mm -hmm. percolation, you know, in uh, processing, right? Because in right. the spring, there's these seeds and these new ideas bubbling up and you're thinking about planting new things um, right. anyway. So what you're talking, saying about flowers just really made me think of that and reminded me of how important that is when you, when you do think about your business life and your own personal growth. Cause a lot of what we're talking about is really your personal growth and evolution in terms of your career yeah. and what that means for your life. Yeah. Um, I, I know that another thing that you and I talk about a lot is that sugaring, you know, we learn to sugar and it's our technical skill and you can become an expert at that. I would consider myself an expert in sugaring. I would consider you an expert in sugaring. I've put in the time in the treatment room. I've made all the mis every mistake you could possibly make. I've already made it and figured out how to fix it, you know, in terms of technique. But there is always that kind of growth process to go through. And so what do you think, what would you say in terms of life, what do you think the, the, the biggest takeaways you've had personally in terms of personal growth mm -hmm. you've taken from developing your skill as a sugarer and becoming a business owner? How has it changed you and helped you grow? That's really funny you ask that. Um, cause I was standing in like my yard the other day and just kind of thinking about, you know, the good and bad of everyday life. And, you know, most of us, hopefully most people that are watching this now are 
entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Maybe they employ some some folks in their entrepreneurship or they're considering entrepreneurship. And I kind of was like, this is, please, mothers out there, don't take offense. I do not consider um, myself as awe-inspiringly crazy powerful as you guys, but my, <laughs> my business is my baby. Yeah. And so I almost just had this moment of like, look at you. Did you think you would do that? You know, like, did you even think you could do that? And um, yeah, it was kind of cool. I was like, you have, my big thing with students is keep showing up. Mm-hmm. And that's not my thing. I read it somewhere in what it is is statistically, you know, when you look at someone's, an actor, go and look at their IMDb. They have done the silliest, the craziest things. Oh yeah. 15 years before (laughs) they did that. So maybe, maybe, and I'm just partial to the guy in Parks and Rec before he turned into the Marvel's Avenger. I just like the kind of unrefined, kind of like a dork. I love that. But keep showing up. Yeah. Because what happens is the people that aren't ready to wake up every day with that fresh mindset. And again, this is why we need to have cycles even in our day. Go to sleep. Tend. When you say like Buddhist wise, like put your uh, worries on hanger and put them outside on your tree. Don't pick them up until morning. Mm-hmm. You don't go to bed like that. Like if you keep showing up, you will be, it may take you 16 hours. Maybe you walked them the marathon, but you'll get there. Mm-hmm. It, you have to keep showing up. And the pace is so huge. What is your pace? I like reassess my pace all the time because my tendency mm-hmm. is to get really excited. And thank God I have students to do that with now because if I got really excited by myself, I would be, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know where I would be. Now I can share that enthusiasm with other people. Right. When they and say, I melted down. I'm like, whatever we all did. We all do. It's all good. We've yeah. all been on the table and the person has sugar boogers and powder everywhere. And they look like, I tell them, it looks like a piece of fried chicken about ready to go into the fryer. <laughs> I had that. I had that moment. And that person was fine because yeah. I was just, look at me being crazy. You know, acceptance is like huge and just sitting there and going, this is crazy. And then you just give them that kind of like, I'm going to make it better. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And you're going to be good. I think that's like the growth mindset of sugaring that everything is possible. I am, uh, you know, a fixed mindset would say, you know, I'm only capable of doing these things and sets these limits, right? you're setting up a limit for yourself. I can only go this far because of X, Y, and Z or these limitations. You start looking at everything around you and it's very easy to consider that because of all these limitations, this is going to be extremely difficult. But a growth mindset in sugaring and in business and in life is really waking up and Mm -hmm. just assuming that you're going to figure it out. And I think that's like you, you had given, you had said, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back for, was it trusting there was not the words you use, but that's how oh, I, I interpret yeah, I believe. it, believing in yourself. And I think it is having that self. It's easy to say, have a growth mindset and, 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 you know, you're capable of anything, but ultimately it's about cultivating that self trust. Do you trust mm-hmm. yourself to show up every day and to do the work? Do you trust mm-hmm. that you are going to put in that time and effort and energy for yourself? And mm-hmm. I think if you s- sit with that, most people, if they really sit with that question, would hopefully get a yes. Like, I do trust myself. And if the answer is no, I don't trust myself it because of these reasons, then that's all changable, right? Because I failed in the past or because, you know, last time I bought a course, I didn't do anything with this. That's every human being <laughs> trying to run a business on planet Earth. I won't even tell you how many courses I bought over COVID. I have a folder for them. I just put them in the folder so I don't have to look at them all day. Yeah. 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 So I do think it's, it is about, sugaring is about showing up imperfectly as mm. is business and life. And I definitely, I'm wondering if you also feel this way. 
I think that's harder now than it was when we got into business because there is that compare and despair mm -hmm. that you're talking about. It's so much more common now. And in the age of Instagram and everything being perfectly curated and people putting putting themselves forth in a way that from an outsider's perspective looks perfect. It looks yeah. like they have all the money and all the time and the beautiful family and the, you know, that they have all of their, their things in order. I think it is easy for people. Cause I work, I work with a lot of the students I work with here are under 25. And this is a common thing that comes up, which is like, how can I compare to that? And Mm, that's an interesting perspective because mm -hmm. um, I would say, even though I've made those mistakes along the way, I wouldn't trade the 10 years of learning. Yeah. Even in, I'm using my sales background. I'm using even like, I can, I can talk myself out of a hole from four years of art critique. Right. I can convince you that the sky is not blue. Right. And not, it's, I don't use these powers very often, but <laughs> that's what I got from being 10 years older than, right. You know, I don't know. I mean, the compare despair, I, this is what I hear a lot where people are saying like, well, let's compare waxing versus sugaring. And of course it's always great to look and see the differences, right. but I do think that there's enough room for everyone at the table. I do think that there's more room, definitely more room for growth because I still have people coming in saying, now, do you just sugar off the, do you just sugar the hair off and rub off the hair off of my body? And yeah. I'm like, I don't want to know about your skin because you're made of metal. Like what is happening there? So I think that there's so much room for learning. And then this is going to sound maybe a little bit controlling, but if I worry only about myself and only about my growth and I don't um, tend again with the tending tend to my community, I can't control my outcomes of sugaring's name in my community. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I worry about teaching somebody too close to me, um, you know, I, I stand to have them go and get an education that I, might feel like, wow, I wish, I wish I could have taught her. I would have told her it doesn't have to pull. We, right. we don't have to do this. We don't have to do it that way. We can do it easier. And I'm not here to compare educations or anything, but yeah, I like, I like the control. And so, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, that to me is the bigger payoff that a client I can, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I'm like, Oh, you live in Vancouver, which is about 30 minutes away from Portland and they don't want to cross the bridge and they don't mm -hmm. want to come into Portland. So I said, yeah, and I know a girl go over there, see what she's like. And the, they'll come back, you know, when they're in on a shopping spree and they're like, she's great. I see her half the time. I see her. That's to me, that's success in sugaring. Absolutely. You have to think of the long con. What's the long con? Is the long con teaching a bunch of people and not supporting them? And then you get, you know, people out there that don't know what they're doing? Or is the long con actually creating the change you want to in your industry? Right. And spend a little bit more time and effort, but it's this, the changes in the vision you want to see. Mm -hmm. So, so what so advice would you give to it? So, a, a new sugarer coming on the scene with other sugarers in the area, right? Because this is becoming more and more common as sugaring gets more popular. Feeling that nervousness, like I'm new, there's already established people. She's already got 2000 followers, 5,000 followers on Instagram and a cool logo. I'm brand new. Mm -hmm. How am I gonna establish myself? What would you say to somebody in that position based on your experience? Befriend them. And honestly, I would say, well, first of all, 100% find a mentor. Yeah. Find a mentor. You were that for me. Now I'm excited and, and uh, overjoyed to say that, you know, we work together now. Yeah. I mean, I still look to you for many things, um, but we work in conjunction for many things now too. But yeah. mentorship takes you. I think it's 30% more successful in business women that have mentors. I mean, that's amazing. That's a kick. That's just free success to me. If you yeah. go and you show up, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a sugar. It could mm -hmm. be somebody that 
you know, maybe you're terrible at, you know, certain parts of strategy. So you go and you find someone that's really good at strategy. Maybe you take a couple classes mm-hmm. and you find someone for them. Yeah. Um, what I would say is befriend, I would say connect. That person's, hey, if that person has two to 5,000 followers, one thing they can teach you is how to get them. Mm-hmm. And the second thing they can do is say, uh, I mean, unless they have a team of a million people, they can hand you clients because they're probably yeah. overwhelmed. I or, can, yeah, I mean. I can hear the, probably because we've had such similar conversations recently with newer sugars, and I can hear them saying, but what if other people consider themselves my competitor and they don't want to be friends with me? I mean, don't waste any energy. This is what I'm going to say. In all uh, situations, even with competitors, my first thing is to extend my hand first. Yeah. Now this, this might be, I, again, I kind of like to, I might be a little bit of a poker of the dead seal. I might be like, hi, how you doing? And maybe subconsciously they're like, whoa, I thought she was my competitor. Yeah. Why is she so friendly? I, I truly am friendly and I have a lot of space for people. And seeing students be successful, I trained somebody that she's in my old place. She sublet my old place for me. Yeah. And, you know, you know, one time she called me and said, hey, what kind of uh, Spotify playlist do you do? And I was like, wow, man, people really could have almost the same exact experience as they did before. If I taught her how to sugar well, if she's in my old place, yeah, I should play she's in my old playlist. <laughs> like, the thing is, you know, there's a billion, uh, there's a billion places out there and they're not going out of business. Yeah. So I think embracing g- you, it, it's a mindset. I can't teach you how yeah. to trust. Yes. But trust. Yeah. But trust is good. Yeah. I. You know what I think it is. is um. And and you know. In sometimes in my work experiences and business experiences, this has caused me a little bit of heartache and and some challenges to overcome. But I all I always assume that people will have the best of intentions, and mm-hmm. that I always assume that there's r- rapport. Right. I I always assume that there's a friendly connection to be made. And sometimes there's not. Sometimes that's not the case. But I think if you assume initially that everyone views you as a competitor and they're not going to want to talk to you because you might be trying to glean some trade secrets from them and take their Instagram followers. If you adopt that assumption, that's exactly the outcome you're going to get because you will approach someone very much in that kind of tentative way where you're like, I don't want to come across, you know, like a creep, but I was just curious. And so I think it is about providing, I always tell people it because, because when I started my business, the internet, social media, I mean, mm-hmm. I had a paper calendar, I aging myself, yeah. you know, it was about making personal connections with people and networking like face to face with people and really asking for the business. And so I came into this social media and networking later. So I had a very well honed networking skill. I hate the word networking, but the ability to build my circle, that skill I honed very well, probably from moving a lot and moving to new cities. And when I moved to Portland before, when I opened the Sugarista, I didn't know anybody. And so the choice was get a job Eh or open a business, but I'm going to need to go and begin building a a circle of friends. I'm going to need to be able to go and build like a circle of people who will be my potential clients. And so I learned along the way that approaching someone and asking, I mean, this seems logical and I say it out loud, but the context of networking we often think is like, hi, I'm Stephanie. Hi, I'm Kyle. Here's my uh, business card. Call me if you need Mm -hmm. me, you know? And it's like, that is not relationship building. And so what I learned over time is that it's really about providing value for people. So if I show up, if I really want to connect with you because you're a big sugaring studio in the area and I'm new on the scene and I re- I really desperately, I'm like trying to get a brunch date with Kyle Alexander. Right. And I'm a new sugarer 
the best way I can show up to you is to be friendly and to provide, try and provide some sort of value for you or like some sort of insight yeah. or an introduction, you know, showing and extending that hand and saying like, I'm here to make friends and to, to collaborate. And I'm not asking anything of you. And I think that's maybe where people get it a little bit mixed up in the beginning is they think I've got to go and ask this person and it's going to be embarrassing and they're going to say no. No. All yeah. you have to do is engage with somebody authentically and start having that conversation. And there are a billion ways. I mean, when I moved to the UK, I didn't know anybody. And then I had yeah. a baby. So I had to build the co my company from my bed with my baby. And so I found that making email introductions for people. So I started to build my network quite quickly because I was in a lot of Facebook groups, right? And so I might connect yeah. with somebody here who I knew that I would really want to get in front of. They didn't know who I was, but I knew someone in the States that I knew they would love to connect with based on the industry they're in. And so I would drop them a DM. Hey, I love your work. I've been following you for a while. I'm really interested in what you're doing. I'm also interested in this. Do you know this person? I'd love to drop an email. Do you mind if I drop an email introduction for you? And that's it. Yeah. Hope you're well and, and leaving it at that. And I think for this, sure. It is a little bit of an art to make these connections, but I think people get a little bit scared um, in the beginning. So it's having that mindset that assuming people are going to want to connect versus compete. We talk about competition a yeah. lot. You know, it's interesting when just reflecting upon what you said, I think the difference is, and you know, whether people get this or not, is coming from a place of um, scarcity right, or abundance. I don't want to sound too woo woo, but it, it does matter. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, I always do this with my clients and I'll do this in general with my life. If I can, I will. Mm -hmm. So if people are like, can you do a lip? I'm like, if I can, I will. Can you cut? Now this gets you into trouble sometimes, but if they're, t I cut people off at 15 minute mark. Right. But if something happens and I don't need to eat lunch or something, and if I can, I will, because I do believe in that karmic frisbee toss and it will come back so what what does it hurt me to go oh you're a doula oh my gosh i have a f person that just moved here to go to doulas well do you mind if i go give her your card you gave me your card right and i don't even have children so this is a perfect opportunity to for me to connect you i mean it's just that's coming from a place of abundance i'm just helping you and it doesn't take any energy um and i think it's different than when you say the compare and uh, you know competing um when i was in beauty school i had a really hard time i would come home just despondent because people didn't have the same standards as me and my husband was really like okay uh, we're, we're done with this if you expect people to have the same standards as you you'll always be sorely disappointed keep your standards don't get bogged down by the others that don't move forward be the person be the change you know i mean not to be like be the change you want to be in, see in the world but you know we're just taking hair but we're talking about you know the ability to open businesses that are women run on a dime honestly the overhead here yeah. is so low i mean my first studio my success in my first studio, just to throw it out there, was so good that it gave me the false sense that I could, you know, do it six times that by myself, you know? And, you know, there's been a learning curve and I've had to work really hard, but, you know, this, it, it's, it, it's a really, really easy business model to go from small to even large. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that when you bring on employees, it's not complicated, but those are things that you can ask for help for. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be, when you don't build your community, when you, when the, when the day is dark, it is really dark because you have no one to ask those questions. And we've all had the same issues. I remember calling you and be like, what do you mean if I change from an S corp to a, you know, and finding out about tax surprises or whatever. It's like, we've all done these things as, as we've gotten into this like really addicted way of being with clients and like the feedback that we get from it. It's yeah. fun. It's we're not going to work. 
we're going to hang out with friends and that's fun to do. And yeah. so why shouldn't you do that? And some of those little legal and bookkeeping things get dropped along the way sometimes. I know I'm not alone, people. No, Maybe you're not alone. alone. And the only reason when you, at, when you called me and we had that conversation that I knew anything about it is because I had already stepped in that shit. <laughs> And like worked my way out of it, you know. I think everyone's at home like this. Now, what about the okay? What <laughs> the, you meant the test score? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Here, what here's was the takeaway? Taxes, pay them. The T is keep on top, honey. <laughs> keep on top of the taxes. But you yeah. know what? We if you if you sat around waiting to know everything, it ain't gonna come. And there's no program to teach you the art that is becoming an entrepreneur, managing your own time, managing your own energy, mm -hmm. you know, the account of the, the, my biggest takeaway, and then I'll, I'll wrap this up with the same question for you. So my biggest takeaway, what I have learned the most from becoming an entrepreneur. And now I'm like almost 14 years in of running my own businesses, which seems impossible. I'm still learning every single day is I am ultimately accountable to myself and, yeah. and I value that. And I never, ever waver on my self authority, my self accountability. And that has been a skill I've had to hone because in the beginning it's very easy to say, this has got to be somebody else's fault or, um, I, nobody taught me this. And so, you know, like it's easy to default to a lot of excuses as to why things didn't go your way or because you didn't know this or because someone else has more money, it's easier for them because they have more money or it's easier for them because they have more childcare, mm -hmm. you know, all of these things. And what, what have, what I have learned and what I know is at the core of what will continue to help me grow and thrive is that I don't look left or right for anyone to take accountability anymore. It's with me and it's uncomfortable sometimes, but that's how I grow. And sometimes it's the wins because you have to be accountable for the mistakes and the growth, but then you also get to be fully accountable. Of course you have your team that supports you, but for your decisions and your wins. And so I think that's what makes it despite being challenging at times to run your own business, challenging almost, you know, all the time <laughs> to run your own business makes it right. so satisfying is because the wins are yours. The hard lessons are yours, yeah. but the wins are yours as well. Thank and you. you know what it feels like to have those wins because you started or executed or pushed forward or moved through a challenge that was so difficult and came out the other side. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, people always say it's not easy running a business and it's not, but ultimately can be, you know, if you want to take yourself through it, you know, lifelong therapy, own a company, own and run your own company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like therapy every week. Um, yeah. So what is your, has been your biggest takeaway in your entrepreneurial experience? Or maybe where have you grown the most? I mean, I want to say like something really great, like you can do it. Like I, I continually am, am like, wow, I didn't know I could do that. But I, I want to just cycle back because when it, you're totally right, when you say the wins are yours, right? The wins are yours and they're worth the pain and the heartache and the learning and the, oh my gosh, why did it take me six times the amount of time that, you know, somebody that knew that could have done that's not how, you know, you don't learn anything being right the first time. Right. You don't. However, I'm going to throw this out here and um, I re really, really, really hope people are still listening. I don't get asked nearly as much as I'd like to, to help people. Hmm. So if you're listening to this and you have an instructor or you need a mentor, I'm not asking for 27 mentees. What I'm saying is you might get that. What, I, what I'm saying is um, don't be afraid to ask for help and don't be afraid to ask for it before you've 
made the mistake of, you know, thinking that you were wrong. I mean, the right. thing is, if you need to ask for help, it's fine. And you'll yeah. learn something from that. But if you keep digging into like, I'll figure it out all by myself and you don't ask anybody else, you know, all you learn is your experience. Yeah. All you get is that. So when I look at, you know, the Tamra Sugar community and I, and I engage with that, it's because I genuinely love when people are allowed to be vulnerable. They allow themselves yeah. to be vulnerable and they say, I, I need help with this one thing. It could be something silly. Like how do you use bamboo extract? It could be right. something as intense as like, I'm, you know, I have a change of housing coming up and I don't know where I'm going to live. And my husband got a job here and I'm yeah. going to be shivering out of my closet, <laughs> whatever. I mean, these things can be done, but not without, you know, you don't have to go it alone. Yeah. I mean, I think that so many people, because it's, easy to start these businesses yeah that they do and then they drop off and then they sit and go gosh i wish that somebody would tell me how to do this you don't know you need help right you don't need to know until you say hey you know how to do this chances are we've at least tried or we go i don't but i know someone that does exactly. and that's the big thing i'm not afraid to be like i have no idea right <laughs> let's figure it out <laughs> like that's the compelling thing to me is like, ooh, you asked me something I don't know the answer to. Let's go in the yeah. book. The other thing I'm gonna say is that all the time I get questions that are in the manual. <laughs> and I'm like, let me look at page 33. That was also <laughs> in the index. So, oh yeah. Um, if you do get if you're one of those people that's like, I don't want to ask her, check out that manual first then reach out and go, you know, the manual didn't go over this. And I'll be like, oh, because that helps us grow too. I'll be like, yeah. oh, yeah. I get asked that question a lot. Because yeah. the education is always kind of the same, but we learn along the way and we edit yeah. and we update. So that's so a, that answer the question? It does. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. I, because I know you so well, I know too that you, you're a problem solver. And I, I love think it. that running your own business at, I mean, that to me is your zone of genius. And so I already also know that that's, that's what keeps you in it and curious and growing is the looking over to the right and noticing that, you know what, this isn't working exactly the way it could be, or it could be much easier. So I'm going to go over and spend some time there, try to rework this system and see if we can make it better. And, and at the essence, that that is what it takes and what it means to be to be building, to be growing. I certainly think you can hone a skill in, lease a treatment room, get your nice core group of clients, and you can reach a point where you're like, this is um, routined and I love the comfort of it. I show up, I do my sugaring, I go home, or maybe you're even working from home. And that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine too. You know, it's like yeah. different strokes for different folks. The, the different... Yeah. I think ultimately there are so many opportunities in sugaring and what you and I know and what we talk about all the time is that becoming a sugarer and learning to sugar is about so much more than hair removal. At this point in my career as a sugarer, hair removal in and of itself is a very small amount of what consumes my energy, what consumes my thought process, yet it's the full nature of what my business does. It's really about the business component developing the ability to go out and create your own job, to create your own work, to create your own future and to take everything you learn and let that catapult you and your life where you want to go. And so very cool. Well, Kyle, if people are watching this and they've managed to stay with us in our <laughs> conversation, which I know they will, um, where can people find you? Because you do lots of classes in the U.S. Yeah. and internationally, but right now in this state that we're in uh, currently, yeah. uh, classes primarily based in the U.S. Um, so if someone wanted to train with you for basics or advanced, how would they go about doing that? Um, you can just go onto my website, which is pretty pooty pretty sweet <laughs> And then you just slash learn to sugar. You can also just navigate from pretty sweet sugaring.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at pretty sweet sugaring. And then my training specific one is pretty sweet. Um, 
sugar training. I think, you know what, isn't that sad that my social media, I always add the sugar. It's pretty sweet training. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can also probably navigate through it. Um, I tend to like a lot of things on Tamara Sugar or post stuff there. So a really great way to find out the educators um, or just kind of really cool accounts to follow is to go to Tamara Sugar. And she posts a lot of our stories and our successes and our travels and all those things on her stories and her Instagram. And of course, Stephanie does as well. Yeah. Education. <laughs> and with Kyle to um, Kyle and I are partnering up to launch the very first online certification that's coming just around the corner in early 2021. It'll be full of awkward shoulder shimmies. Lord knows what else, but uh, certainly the experience and lots of passion around just getting down to the granularity with your sugaring technique and helping you become really good at it so you can get there really, really fast and with lots of support. So that's something exciting that Kyle and I are collaborating on right now. And also, if you're watching this and you are using Tamra Sugar anywhere in the world and you're not already in our Tamra Sugar community, you got to get in there too. Um, Kyle is the main answer of all sugary questions in there as well. Um, and so it'd be great to see you in there if you're not there already. Kyle, I just love you. Thank you so much. It's always nice to catch up and I appreciate you taking the time in this early morning before you go sugar today. I, I go sugar today. Yeah, yeah I still sugar in the, in the room or in the, with clients three days a week. So talk about sugaring all morning and then go sugar all oh. afternoon and then dream about it. <laughs> Put your sugar on a hanger and go hang it on a tree. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you, Kyle. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.